Uh, I'm hitting size constraint problems here. <laughs> I'm trying to get a horse into a rabbit hutch. It's just, oh. This QS8, uh, it's gonna have to go. I know, I'm gonna have to put an XT90 on it somehow. Are they 90s? Yes. The size difference between XT90 and QS8 is massive. And I don't know how I'm going to get one of those on there. Actually, hang on. I've got some AS150s, which I think I might use. Uh, it's probably going to be easier to move them around. I've got constraints here because this is all in one. So if if I can get, what's this now, um, 8AWG. I need to get two 8AWG in there. Well, that ain't going to be easy, is it, Tony? This is the DC to DC converter, so it takes the 70-something volts down to 12 volts for all my electrics, which I've still got to run across here. And they come out of the hole here, which you can see how much gap I've got to put the wire in through. So that's going to be another bloody tight squeeze. This is for the charge port which is the other half of that thing which connects to that so for that I've connected the negative goes to the C negative on the BMS and the positive goes to the battery positive which is linked here and the other half of this wire goes down to the um, DC to DC and the negative goes to the C negative that's so as when I power it up, this is powered up, otherwise it would be on all the time. So it's getting there, but the QS8, which I was, I've got to change anyway, because I burnt it. Um, I'm going to have to put an AS150 on there. I don't know how. That's going to be very, very, very tight. And I'm not... I can't just make do with one at 8AWG. I need to keep the, the voltage drop or voltage sag to an absolute minimum. And if I start messing around with this, then, you know. Okay. So unfortunately, this has got to go. Let's see if I can get the damn thing off afterwards. This one's scrap anyway, because it's burned. Somebody set fire to it. The thing with a... With a BMS, it's always got a bit of voltage going through it. There's no current, but there is there is voltage going through it. So if I was to measure those two, I don't know what I'm, I'm going to get. Probably about two thirds of the voltage, or something like that. So you have to be careful with these things when you're soldering and unsoldering and everything. I'm wondering if... See, I had to loop these round here. If I put them directly over there, number one, I'll have nothing to solder to. And number two, you can't root it, obviously. That was the idea, it was going to sit like that. So I've got to take that off. I don't know whether to cut it. If I put that back on, I can cut it and do it fresh. Or I can try and shoe on that into one of these. What the f***? Uh, what? Hey? <laughs> What's going on here? Is that the way they are? I've never used them. Oh, I have. Have I? Yes, I have. So does that one go... That one goes in there, and that one will go in there, and I... Does that fit in there? Does that go in there? Is that longer than that? That's the short one. So that one goes, that one must go in there then. That can't go in there. That can't go in there. How do these work? That must go in there. And then this one goes in here. It must do. That's too long for that. It'll stick out. So this must go in that one. Google time. I took the QS8 or whatever it is off and I've fitted uh, XT150s. Now along with that I've also had to put silicon wire on the phase wires because I couldn't bend them round enough 
without them um, starting to break so I've had to put these on and then label them what, what colour they are uh, here's the phase wires as you can see the g <laughs> the gap it's just there's no space for anything there uh, I've got to wire these up and that's going to be a challenge in itself trying to get them in there uh, I've got a hole there which you can just about see for the wires to go through for the front the DC to DC is fitted, that's all working, the BMS is working this here is for the charger which has got to go into this hole here and I don't know how the bloody hell for those who were thinking why didn't I use any other connector why didn't I use the QS8 there wasn't enough room to put it in there that's number one because they're a lot bigger than this uh, I couldn't have put it on here because there's no room I can't put 6AWG on top of here because I wouldn't be able to get the case on I'd have to extend the case I want this to be completely standard by the time I put this casing on so you can't tell what's inside that's the idea of it so I've got to cut these down I think I'll strip the wire back to about here so I've got them all exposed or maybe there and then I'll make a decision on where what goes where because like I say I mean as you can see space is a, a very very tight in here you know those things that you wish you hadn't started well I'm glad I did <laughs> because it's, it's so tidy, it's so nice, I like tidy and I like nice the place is like a bomb site uh, controllers <laughs> temporarily fitted we have a green LED Yeah, I think that's going to go some. <laughs> uh, yeah, it needs balancing. Everything needs doing. Uh, that's with a 33% charge battery. No flux weakening. Absolutely nothing. Uh, I've had to change all the phase wires. Literally, I've had to change them because I couldn't bend them enough. This sort of wire doesn't bend very well. So I've had to change all those with silicon and the same again with the uh, positive and negative. I had problems with the rear suspension. Um, I've still got to spray this, don't worry. The, what was happening was, is the bolt, the swinging arm bolt. Now, when I pull it up tight, it didn't matter what I put in here or I put in there, when I pull it up, you can't make you can't move the arms which isn't very good they've got to be free swinging because it's a swinging arm so what i've done is there's a brass uh insert which is a press fit and then we have this thing that goes in the middle of it so that goes in the middle there there's already one on this side and then i put that on there and i get me washers and then i get me my lock nut And now, these are free swinging. Because these swinging arms have now got to sit on the end, because that bolt, in essence, is floating, uh, because I couldn't tighten it up too much, because that was pulling against that, and that was pulling against that, this is the only way I could do it. Now that makes that bolt completely, totally rigid and these things are completely free swinging. So now what I've got to do is, uh, I've got to get my aluminium bar to do my cross brace, which isn't going to take five minutes I can tell you. <laughs> this is the original cross brace that went here, but as you can see, <laughs> it ain't big enough anymore. So I've got my own. I've got to cut that piece off there 
and then I've got to file that piece off there. I've basically got to make it the right shape. How long is that going to take? That's going to take a few lie downs in between, I'll tell you. Everything's all the wrong colour. What is this? This is the cross brace for the swinging arm. Um, these were very easy to cut. It's taken me two days. Two days to cut them. So they go on there, that goes in the middle, the swinging arms go on the outside here, that's just to extend it because obviously I've had to move things onto the outside. Anyway, they're nearly done, I'm waiting for my bolts to come in because me being the dickhead, oh yeah, number one I cut the holes the wrong way, <laughs> drilled them wrong. Anyway, me being the dickhead, number one, I ordered the wrong bolts and instead I ordered grub screws. I don't know why, what I was thinking, um, and I don't know what the f the other one was. Anyway, I'm waiting for the bolts to come in for that so I can bolt it on and then I can work more on the frame. Nobody mentioned anything about the temperature sensors that have been sitting here all along. I didn't fit them on the battery, did I? Now that should all be the right length. I should be able to just on the outside, I think, maybe. I'm just going to jam them in somewhere. The other thing I want to do, I need to have or think of some visual notification that the BMS is still on. Because with these things, obviously when you it connects your power switch, it bleeps once. The only way to make sure it's off is to hold the button in. Now, I'll either put one of the external, one of the LEDs externally, or I'm gonna have a DRL or a daylight running light constantly on, so as I know when it's powered on, when it's powered off, I think that might be a better option, actually. I've got some new handlebar grips coming in, uh, but they're not gonna be here for another six months, probably, I don't know. So, I've got to wire the temperature sensors. Well, I haven't really got to wire them, I've just got to fit them. This has taken a long time to get right. Um, instead of having a solid bar across here, obviously I'm using the original brace and I'm also using these. These take a long time to cut. Now, I've had to put a washer in there. It may be because this needs bringing out a bit and I might have to make a custom bracket to hold the disc, the caliper on. So this one's already been pulled out to the right distance, that's perfect. But this one might need pulling out a bit and then that will make that go in a bit more which will actually level that up. So I'm going to have to do that. But to get the geometry right and also to make it so as it's completely free even when this is all bolted up it's been an absolute nightmare it's taken me near enough a week to do that and obviously you abled people will probably be able to do it in a day I don't know but anyway so that's near enough done and then I can take it all apart and spray it proper matte grey or silk grey or whatever black not grey so I've got to do that and then I can finish with the rest of the body and then get the bottom plate on and then I can start working on the electronics to get all that wired up.